enough of enough of both of our teams. There are some new things, like you mentioned, when it comes to the rules and some regulations, at least in the Premier League. The first one, and this comes as bad news to Newcastle. Um, I know Eddie Hell might not like me saying this, but they're not going to be able to w- waste time anymore. Simple as. The time that they waste is going to be added straight back to the added time at the end of the halves. And we saw that already against uh, with, with your team against City. Rightfully so, and it caused a lot of dispute between the two managers. There was agreement, understandably. I mean, you're always going to argue in favor of whatever happened to your team. But I feel like this is the right move. Honestly, it's about damn time because I'm tired of seeing teams just run the clock down and then when it comes to the end, we're like, plus three minutes. And I'm like, what? How? And they just go on playing normally. And it's like... Yo, do you not remember the time when the U kicked away the ball and he's strolling or walking back to get it? Like, axe injured. No, all of that needs to be added right back on there so we know we get a clear assessment of who the best team was throughout the season. Every match needs to have the same amount of time in every single, in the whole season, right? It's not fair if Liverpool play a match against Newcastle, let's say, and they're playing... They're playing actually football on the field for 50 minutes, but then, you know, which is actually proven. Yeah, which is actually proven by, yeah. Actually proven. It's as an average of 50 minutes in a game. But even so, if now Liverpool and Newcastle play an on the field game for 50 minutes, and then Burnley and Bournemouth play a game, and that game is lasting 70 minutes, it's not a fair assessment because the two games, they were not equally timed. And football is a timed sport. It's not like you're going for first to three goals like we've discussed in our previous epi. I mean, I, I do agree to a certain extent. Um, there, there, there does need to be something done regarding regarding the, the teams trying to not play football as much as possible. Um, I just don't know if adding 10 minutes at the end is, is the right answer. It's probably the best answer that we have right now. And we saw that in the World Cup too, and it was a welcome change, right? I just, I mean, we're we're playing a hundred minute game every 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 week now, right? I I I think I I don't know. That's just. But it, people say a hundred minutes like as if the football is just being constantly played for a hundred minutes. Like they're just totally using the words and creating this narrative of oh, we're playing a hundred minute games, like Pep said. No, bro. Like he said, we're going to be here till 9 a.m. He said that in his interview, post-match interview. It's absolute false. The manager was saying that because he lost and he was upset about that the way that his team lost that match. Understandably. But it's it's not just some arbitrary number anymore. It's the actual time that was taken off throughout the game. Well, uh, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't even know if that game had eight minutes of extra time to be added and plus you had you had was it two minutes a minute 30 i'll give you that at the at the point the corner was given i mean a minute 30 on top of eight minutes added that i mean there I, I wouldn't agree with that there was there's a there's a factual amount of time that's being added compared to because if, if we're going off of factual numbers there should be 30 minutes added you know where the average is 55 minutes ball, ball in play so there should be 35 minutes of of added time which we're not seeing. Um, so I don't I don't agree that adding eight minutes, ten minutes is the right number of time added. Um, but either way, I think we're gonna see a lot more of that this season, you know, equalizers in, in the dime minutes. Also, uh what happened between Liverpool and Tottenham, we might see that three, four times a season now. So this is just something that we're gonna have to get used to, probably. Um and, and we'll see how how it how it um how it goes on throughout the season. But we already saw it in, in the first game, so I thought we were, it was pretty interesting to bring up on, on the on the podcast prior to the beginning of the season. The next one, not so big, uh, is just the offside rule. Uh, this pretty much is if the ball touches the, the, the defender and it gets to the opposition, it does not automatically make it offside. Liverpool, we saw two, exa- two polar examples. Uh, one of them against Wolves in the FA Cup. Um, 
I forget the defender's name, but he he made a mistake in clearing the ball, and it went straight to Salah, who was in offside position. He wasn't caught offside because it was a deliberate attempt to play the ball by the defender, and it just fell to Salah. Whereas in the Aston Villa game, where Liverpool, it was pretty much confirmed that they will be playing in the Europa League. They had a goal, goal disallowed because an, uh, the ball was played from a free kick, I believe it was, and the ball was deflected off of an Aston Villa defender onto... I would like to say it was Firmino who scored, but then it was caught offside because the, the referee de- deemed that it was not a deliberate attempt to play the ball. Rather, it was just a deflection. So it was already in play. Now it's just in writing. So, I, I mean, I don't think there's much. If you want to debate on the, the deliberate attempt, uh, we can. There's That's probably a subject for another another time. But I think the, the, the last... I mean, there's other ones, but the last biggest thing is probably giving more authority to, to the referees. And, you know, this was inspired by your own manager, Arteta. Yeah, and he he felt the repercussions of that in the following match as well. Right. Like in City, he, he ended up getting booked for coming out of his technical area and, you know, being what I would like to call passionate about... Unnecessarily, <laughs> unnecessarily. It's, it's, a, it's a community shield game. Unnecessarily is correct, but was he right? Yes. In that play, yes. Because party clearly, he got a yellow card and you could say it was rightful, but then Rodri made literally the exact same play and didn't get booked. So I understand. But to the original point of the referees going to be a lot stricter and the managers leaving their technical areas, it's something that has been attempted before, but I don't see it realistically being enforced to the degree that they're talking about. Because when you do that, we talk about the managers like Arteta, like Pep, like Klopp, like De Zerbi, who are just naturally animated figures. They're passionate about what they do. And we as fans, we don't want to see the passion Leave the players, leave the manager, leave the sport in general. And but I think then, a but, lot then, of- but then at what point is this passion, you know, get overwritten by uh, pretty? I mean, harassment. I don't. I'm not saying they're harassing the referees, but it, it's just it, it. It can be that, right? So yeah, there's a point where it can spill over. I hear what you're saying, but then I hear what you're saying. There has to be a po- a point where we say okay, you've crossed the line. Where is that line crossing is, is still up for debate. Right, I think so subjective, yeah. It's very subjective, right? Because if you if we take the passion out of it, if we just say, no, you can't be animated at all, you can't talk back to the referee at all, you need to just sit in your dugout and stay there. It takes, it takes all of that away. And part of the manager's job is to motivate the players and be acting like this motivates the players. A lot of the players are going to see that from the outside and say, wow, okay, my manager's like that. It's contagious. It's going to feel through the rest of the, the players, feel through the rest of the, the fans. Everyone's going to feel that. And to take that away from the game would be, to me, absolutely terrible. It would be a terrible decision. But no, to your point, where do we distinguish that line? I think just to kind of put an end on this, the referees just got to do their jobs, you know. Obviously, there's going to be moments where the, the managers, like to your point, try to do this on purpose to motivate or to, to sway the, the, the crowd and whatnot. But this will not happen 99% of the time if they will do their jobs properly. You know, they're 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 the ones causing this in the first place. So, I I don't want to say they deserve the abuse, but they, they just need to be better. Simple as you know, Lee Mason, the, the guy who who forgot to draw the the line for Brentford's equalizer against Arsenal last season, he was he was I mean he was let go, but but then he's come back. Like where where does this where does this stop? Like there's just so much incompetence, and you, I just I just don't get it. No, I hundred percent agree because then you ask the question if if the managers are not allowed to speak back like this, right? And the managers clearly, I mean, sorry, the referees clearly make an error. 
are the managers just expected to sit back now? I think yeah, I mean, they have yeah. to defend their team. They and the to... and, and the players too. Not and just the, the managers, players, yeah. They have a right to come out and question why is Rodri not getting booked for that? They have a right to question that. And I think that's the only reason why Alvarez ended up getting a booking for kicking the ball away right after that. Because yeah. of complaining before. You have to you have to have that allowance or that freedom to be able to defend for your team. Yeah. I mean, it, it does not stop the players or the managers from doing that. It just uh, prevents them from crowding the referee. So you you would not be allowed to have five players surrounding the referee. Uh, but, I mean, we'll see how much of this is, you know, actually abided by the players or the referees in terms of giving out punishments. I, I, one thing I would not want to see is in one week, a referee giving out four yellow cards to a team. And in another week, same thing happens and it just kind of goes moot. As long as there's consistency, even though I don't like it, I, I, I'm I'm willing to accept it and see how it goes. I think that's fair. I think that's what everybody is looking for at the end of the day, right? If We're, we're not going to get all the rules we want, all the laws that we think should be in place. Everybody has different opinions. But as long as they're consistent, that's all we can ask for. You can't be giving one the the benefit of the doubt and then you, you punish the other one. But back to that point on how we we solve that issue, it came to my mind the other day about in implementing the basketball rule. I think it's a rule in basketball where you you're able to contest a decision or you have like a certain amount of of contested yeah. challenges. Yeah. <laughs> It's it's a thing in every American sport, pretty much. Yeah. What What are your thoughts about implementing that? I, 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 I like it. I, I like it that you know every team nowadays are they have access to split second video, you know, really slowed down video to the point where you can actually pinpoint whether the referee was right or wrong, right, and. I like it, except for the fact that it might slow the game down. I mean, what, at what, how many do you set the limit at? Three, four, five? Um, and it, it's just, frankly, never going to happen. Uh, that is straight up undermining the referee's authority, you know, challenging their decision. We know they don't like that. And imagine we, I mean, dude, that, that's just never going to happen. Yeah, but they're wrong. Like, if you're wrong, you're wrong. I, it's not I, even a matter of respect or undermining authority. You're simply wrong. Yeah, I mean, I know, but it's the same reason why they come out defending their own referees. It's 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 like they're their own. They got to protect their family. You know, it, it's just it's never gonna happen in in English football. But yeah, clearly because they won't even interview them after the matches. Yeah, although I, I think we will, uh, they will be releasing the audio right from the from the matches, the audio discussion. So that is a welcome change. We would like to see more of that in that towards towards a step of uh, we call that progress in in this world. Let, let's see. For real, <laughs> yeah, we haven't seen that Matt, at all uh, within when it comes to referees. So let's see how it kind of evolves. That's all we have time for today. Guys, thanks for tuning in as always. We hope you enjoyed your time with us. Remember to subscribe, to leave comments, and share with your friends. Follow us on social media at FOTBPod. Don't forget to leave a review, rating, and most importantly, don't forget to turn on those notifications. Join us again next time as we discuss the highly anticipated upcoming Premier League action. Thanks again as always. See you then.